Number 771 is an MK5 class Mikado type, otherwise known as a 282 locomotive. This engine is one of 25 of the class built for the Texas and New Orleans Railroad by the Baldwin Locomotive Works of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania in 1913. The engines were numbered between 750 and 774. Number 771 was originally lettered for the Galveston, Harrisburg, and San Antonio Railroad, which was, like the Texas and New Orleans, another subsidiary of the Southern Pacific. The Mikado was considered a workhorse locomotive for freight operators. There were two leading wheels, eight drive wheels, and two trailing wheels. The front wheels are 37 and one quarter inch in diameter, and the two trailing wheels are 42 and one half inches in diameter. The rear wheels or trailing wheels are useful when the engineer has to guide the engine by backing it into switches. These wheels are also important when the track is not gauge. A little known fact about the 282 Mikado class locomotive, it was named for the Emperor of Japan. Baldwin, the manufacturer, had previously designed a locomotive specifically for use in the unique geographical challenges of the Japanese countryside. The cylinders of the Mikado are so proportionately designed that the traction amount of 53,000 pounds is achieved with the relatively moderate working pressure of between 170 and 180 PSI. Another advantage of the Mikado was the large size boilers. Some are as large as 82 inches in the first ring. This allows the use of nearly 500 two-inch tubes, 29 to 21 feet in length. This can provide up to 5,000 square feet of tube heating and operate at a boiler pressure of up to 225 pounds per square inch. The designers at the Baldwin Locomotive Works were known as innovators. They had found a competitive advantage by designing different locomotives for a variety of different operators. Their work on the Mikado was a part of their approach to innovation. The decision to design a larger size boiler had another distinct advantage. The new size enabled the engine to operate at a greater horsepower, which means it can haul a greater freight tonnage at higher speeds. And the ratio of heating surface to great area resulted in a substantial savings in fuel usage. According to the industry publications, the Mikado locomotives were operated by the Baltimore and Ohio, the Southern Railroad, the Rock Island, the St. Paul, Montana and Ohio Railway, the International and Great Northern, the Quincy and the Illinois Central, and others. 
Also, during World War I, the Orleans Railway of France ordered 50 Mikados. Later, after the war, the nation of Peru ordered Mikados, as did the Tientsin Puko Railway of China. Railroads operating in mountainous areas where there were sharp turns saw great operational value in the Mikado's shorter wheelbase. This was especially true for the operation of the Great Northern Railroad in the Pacific Northwest, where a majority of their freight traffic was lumber. Railroads operating black snakes the insider term for coal trains, also benefited from the increased horsepower of the Mikado. In the early days of the railroad, 58 cents of every dollar of profit came from freight operations. This was especially important in Virginia and West Virginia, where the Geologic Society estimated there were 60 million tons of coal in 1915. Another unique aspect of the Mikado and other steam engines is the flue expander and the flue roller. These have to be in perfect shape, which was a requirement stipulated by the Interstate Commerce Commission. The design and development of the Mikado helped to initiate an industry discussion about safety. Superheated steam can reach a temperature of 150 degrees and is practically invisible when discharged into the atmosphere. This level of heat created a danger of burns. Work clothing became an important topic. Long overcoats were not recommended for work approval on the Mikado. The railroads suggested that a short corduroy coat lined with Mackinac cloth and rubber be worn during the winter. Gloves as personal protection equipment were also recommended to prevent burns. And all trainmen were encouraged to keep their hands clean. The higher speed of the Mikado caused the railroads to begin to consider hearing protection. The wind striking the trainmen's ears would sometimes cause hearing loss for days and eventually deafness. Some railroads recommended that trainmen place cotton in their ears as personal protection. Another important safety position on the railroad was the boiler inspector. A little known fact is that the boiler inspector was required to tap every one of the hundreds of stay bolts in the firebox to identify leaks. Steam locomotives required extensive and expensive boiler maintenance. More of the Mikado class locomotives were built in 1916 at Alco's Brooks Locomotive Works in Patterson, New Jersey, number 775 through number 794. A further 12 were built at the T and NO shops in Algiers, Texas between 1919 and 1921, number 738 through 749. Here are some specifics 
about number 771. The locomotive has a 16-foot, 6-inch driver wheelbase and engine wheelbase of 35 feet, 2 inches, weighs 285,950 pounds. It also has a wall scart valve gear and 26 inch by 28 inch cylinders. The grate is 70.4 square feet and the firebox 235 square feet. As an oil burner, 771 has a total heating surface of 4,839 square feet, including 865 square feet of superheating. The boiler had a Worthington S or SA feed water heater and Nathan Simplex lifting injector and will operate at a boiler pressure of 210 PSI, delivering 53,629 pounds of tractive effort. Number 771 has a tender weighs 156 100 pounds light and has a capacity of 9,000 gallons of water and 2,940 gallons of oil. Number 771 was donated to the city of Victoria, Texas in 1955. The city of Victoria sold the locomotive to the Grapevine Vintage Railroad in 2001 for $10. And it is now on display in Grapevine on West Dallas Road near Main Street in Grapevine, Texas. This short documentary is a part of our Museums of the Heartland series created to protect the heritage of what matters most. View an episode of Museums of the Heartland on our Limeville YouTube channel and subscribe for more short subject documentaries.